Welcome to Corpus Christi Online. We are so glad you are joining us today. We are journeying this year on the topic of essentials. And this month I have the privilege of ending up, uh, ending off this month theme of silence. Not a word that we like, most of us. We like a hustle and a bustle, people. But there's also people watching today that love silence, love solitude, love being on their own. Today I want to end off this month with a topic, when God is silent. You see, it's one thing when maybe your wife is giving you the silent treatment, but it's a whole nother thing when God is silent. And we sometimes call it different things in our lives. Sometimes we, we call it you go through a winter season or you, you're walking through the desert or it's dark, whatever uh, you may call it. And uh, maybe I, I just want to start off today by saying when I go through a winter, when I experience but God is silent in my life, I ask myself two questions. First one is, are there any sin in my life? Are there any stuff that I need to stop doing that's not honoring and glorifying God? Because the word sin means to miss your mark. And the second question I ask myself, am I obedient to His word? Many times we, we trust God for a word and He gives us a word, but we're not obedient. We're not doing what He tells us to do. So uh, with all due respect, I believe God won't waste His breath on telling you something new if you haven't done what He previous, previously asked you to do. So today we're going to discuss this topic when God is silent. I want you to read with me Matthew 27. We're going to read from verse 14, uh, 45. Matthew 27 from verse 45. And I'm reading out of the Good News Bible. It says, at noon, 12 o'clock the afternoon, the whole country was covered with darkness, which lasted for three hours. At about three o'clock, Jesus cried out with a loud shout, Eli, Eli, Lima, Sabachthani, which means, my God, my God, why did you abandon me? Some of the people standing there heard him and said, he's calling for Elijah. One of them ran up at once, took a sponge, soaked it in cheap wine, but it put it on the end of a stick and tried to make him drink it. But the others said, wait, let us see if Elijah is coming to save him. Jesus again gave a loud cry and breathed his last. Then the curtain hanging in the temple was torn in. Two, from top to bottom. The earth shook, the rocks split apart, the graves broke open, and many of God's people who had died were raised to life. They left the graves, and after Jesus rose from the dead, they went into the holy city where many people saw them. I truly believe when you and I have the privilege of becoming parents, we understand a little bit more about God's heart. We know the scripture, John 3, 16, For God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, so that each one of us who believes in Him will have eternal life. God giving His Son. And Jesus' life built up until this moment, a climax in the history of man. It, it actually started at the story of Adam and Eve. That each thing that happened was, was showing us towards the Savior, the Christ, the second person in the Holy Trinity, Jesus Christ, that needed to come to die for the sin of the world. When Adam and Eve sinned, God slaughtered a, a deer and made them clothes. And there the first shedding of blood took place. 
And that was a, a, a large part of, of, the, of the people of Israel and how they served God. But here on a hill outside of Jerusalem, it was a climax. The Son of God gave His life for you and me because He loved us. And the first thing that happened, the Word says there was darkness over the whole country. If you've ever been to Israel, it's quite a big place. For over the whole country, country there was darkness between 12 in the afternoon up until 3 and many times even today in 2021 you and I experience darkness maybe you at a place now in your life where it seems dark where it seems but is the light ever going to shine again maybe a place of hopelessness and in this hour in a sense, when I, when I see it in my spiritual eye, I believe God the Father for a moment looked away. He looked away because that was the price that needed to be paid. That which the law could not do, that which uh, me and you, we, our, our trying, our efforts could not do, Jesus took the sin of the world upon himself. And darkness for three hours covered the land of Israel. Maybe you're in a dark place. Maybe you're not in a good space. Maybe you're negative. Maybe you lost your job. Maybe you're struggling to, um, to, to meet ends. Just keep on watching. Because the end is better than the beginning. There was darkness. The second thing, Jesus cries out. He cries out. My God, my God, verse 46, my God, my God, why did you abandon me? Yo. From the beginning we see that God works in a team. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Let's, let us make man, God says in Genesis. Us referring to the Holy Trinity. Father, Son, Holy Spirit. And while He was on earth, a lot of miracles happened. The blind could see again. The deaf could hear again. Even the dead were raised. But in this hour, because this price needed to be paid for all mankind up until the end of time, for each and every person, even those that you dislike today, even those that you feel, but I don't think God loved them that much, even those, in that hour, Jesus cried out on the cross, hanging there and His love for us, keeping Him there. My God, my God, why did you abandon me? It's terrible when God becomes still in your life. It's not a nice place to be. When you experience, but, but Lord, where are you? What's happened to your voice? What's happened to your presence? I don't experience, I don't feel it anymore. And sometimes we feel as if God has abandoned us. But the truth is, this, as He said to Joshua in Joshua 1, I will never leave you nor forsake you. But sometimes in our human nature, we feel that as if God has abandoned us. One person once told me the definition of hell is the absence of God. And, and, and we read about the hell and the devil and the demons and what happens there in the word. But that was a definition that, that stuck. 
Hell is the absence of God. When you feel totally abandoned from God. And that's what happened on the cross outside Jerusalem on that day. That for a moment the God the Father needed to look away because that was the price that needed to be paid once and for all for the mankind, for mankind. And then something happened. Verse 50 said that he breathed out his last breath. And then the curtain hanging in the temple was torn in two. But it doesn't stop there. It says it wasn't a tear, it wasn't a scratch or a mark. It was torn in two from top to bottom. Something new was born. You see, this curtain in the, in the lives of the Jewish people, of the, the, the people of Israel, was sacred. Because on the other side of the curtain was the holiest of holies. Where only a selected few could come in. They called them the high priest. And the high priest needed to go into this place. What, which was symbolic of the presence of the Lord. Once a year. Slaying a lamb. Shedding blood. For all the people. Only to do it again the next year. And the next year. Up until this time. As Galatians 4 said. In the fullness of time. On God's ordained perfect time. He sent His Son Jesus Christ. To die on a cross for you and me. He became the Lamb. Without blemish. Without spot. And He shed His blood. Once and for all. And when he breathed out his, his last breath, the curtain that symbolizes also the law and efforts from man, it was torn from top to bottom. And thank God that something new was born there. In this hour of darkness, in this hour of abandonment, in this hour of God keeping silent, Something new was born. There's an old song that we sang in church. Something good is about to happen. Something good is in store. I wrote this down. That your brightest light often comes after your darkest night. Your brightest light often comes after your darkest night. Here... At the, at the climax of the Savior giving His life for all mankind, a new covenant was born. A covenant that you and I who have said yes to the Savior can live in now today in 2021. A covenant of grace. A covenant where God told Paul, my grace is sufficient, my grace is enough for you. In this dark, abandoned hour of the, our Savior, something new was born. And when I think about this curtain being torn from top to bottom, I experience something about the throne of God, which is written about in Revelation 4, that God is sitting on His throne. He's present and He's inviting us, come and sit on my lap. Come and experience intimacy. Come and experience relationship. Come and experience how I whisper in your ear, I love you, my child, my son, my daughter. I love you. Even while God was silent, and our Savior died the most horrific death. Something new was born. And then it goes further on. And I don't know about a lot of people that preach sermons on this. It says that the earth shook, the rocks split apart, the graves broke open, and many of God's people who died were raised to life. 
They left the graves and after Jesus rose from the dead, they went into the holy city where many people saw them. There were miracles. People that were buried maybe a week, a month, a year ago were now raised from the dead. People were seeing them again. They were walking in the streets. So even in this dark, abandoned hour, there was miracles. Can you just for a moment try to, to fathom that maybe you were at the funeral of this beloved or friend a month back and you saw the coffin going into the ground and now all of a sudden this person which funeral you attended you see them now in Jerusalem walking around being raised from the dead by the power of God and this miracle working God is still the same today there's a reason he, they, they call him the Alpha and Omega. He's the beginning and the end. He's the same yesterday, today and forever. He is still a miracle working God. And a miracle is defined by that which you and I cannot do. Only God can do it. And I want to end off today and also this month that we spend on silence. That many times, even in this day, we experience darkness. Sometimes feel that God has abandoned us. But I want to encourage you with a word of hope. There's something new. There's something new in store. There's a miracle waiting to happen. All we need to do is put our faith, put our trust in Him. As the song goes, God will make a way where there seems to be no way. He works in ways we cannot see. He will make a way for me. If you are in need of a miracle today, where you're sitting, lying, standing, whatever you are doing right now, would you just raise your hand, just in faith, Lord, I need a miracle. I trust you for a miracle. I believe you and I should and can do what we can do. But there's certain stuff that we need the intervention of God. And we call that a miracle. Only God can do it. Maybe it's waiting on a job. Maybe you've handed out many CVs. And you feel hopeless. He's still a God of miracles. I want you to, to grasp that in your hand today by faith. Lord, this is what I need. This is the miracle. Call it out by name. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, thank you for the privilege that we can call you our Father. Thank you that the curtain was torn and a new covenant was born. A covenant where, where we can come, come and sit at your, on your lap experience your presence experience intimacy with the father through your son jesus christ and lord you know each one watching you know this story you know every detail of their lives and i pray that you will come and do a miracle that you will come and do a miracle i want to proclaim it today that you are still a miracle working god lord i want to speak prophetically into the people's lives that are watching that are in need in dire need maybe today for a miracle i pray that you will come and intervene lord i pray that you will come and reveal yourself as a miracle working god but alongside that, also added on, when the miracle come, may we not be silent. May we testify about your abundance, about your amazing grace and your provision. In Jesus' mighty name, Amen. Thank you for tuning in today. May God keep on blessing you. And remember, He blesses us for one reason, to be a blessing.
to others. Bye.